Hey guys, what's up? Now, did you know that the real Molina is actually dead? If that's true, then who the f*** is this? To get to the bottom of things, let's first check out on how Molina and Nana met each other. Now, as you all know, Nana is a Leonine, and the Leonines are quite the weird race. The Leonines are swift and agile creatures that are blessed with spiritual powers. Now, what do they do with these spiritual powers? Well, they use it to bake pies, catch fish, and basically to just run and jump around the forest. With that, you can tell that the Leonines are an easy-going race, right? And it's probably because of this reason. The Azuria Forest, which is home to the Leonines, were untouched by the Endless War. The Endless War is the largest war that had happened in the Land of Dawn, and it had scarred pretty much everything that is except for the Azuria Forest, which was protected by the Moon Goddess. All the Leonines were lively, excitable, and pretty much had a positive outlook on things. Although we have to remember that the race had never experienced major conflicts since the Moon Goddess had protected their forest from the Great War. So they lived on, making pies and having forest parties all day long. Out of this wild and energetic Leonines though, there was one that stood out the most. Nana was more enthusiastic and lively than any of her other peers. She also had more spiritual powers than anyone from the Leonine race. However, this combination of traits didn't go well together. You see, Nana always loves to help her friends with all sorts of stuff, from baking pies for parties to hunting down rare fish ingredients from the forest rivers. However though, being excitable and a bit clumsy, while also having powerful spiritual powers, wasn't the best features for these delicate tasks. She would often burn pies, scare off fishes, or uproot entire fields of berry bushes. This caused the other Leonines to distance themselves from Nana. Thankfully, Molina was always there to keep her company. Now, let's go further back to Molina's origin, which is a bit weird. Molina used to live at the edge of the moonlit forest, and yep, Molina is a girl. She had no parents, no friends, and pretty much lived on her own for as long as she could remember. Hmm, suspicious suspicious. Anyway, one day, she went to the area of the Leonines and for some reason, got herself stuck in a dangerous cave. It was there that she first met Nana. Nana rescued the leopard cat Molina out of the cave. Since then, Molina would always follow Nana around and eventually, they became friends. <laughs> Nana though didn't like being with Molina all day long. She still preferred to be with her fellow Leonines. Her fellow Leonines who actually didn't like her so much. Also, Nana would always get into all sorts of trouble in the forest. And she didn't feel that Molina, given how weak she was, wouldn't be safe around her. So that's how Nana and Molina met, and that's the state of their relationship. Now, fast forward to the present. The whole Leonin race was having a rare get-together. They were planning to build a Meow playground, a magnificent playground for the whole race. Now I'm gonna fast forward a bit on this cliche part for you guys. Basically, the whole race worked on it for months, and once it was finished, they held a big great party for everyone, and Nana was among those party goers, and she got drunk. Not sure if she's a minor, but our little Nana got drunk. The drunk Nana, for some reason, wanted to bake more pies, and with her great spiritual powers and clumsy self, instead of baking more pies, she instead accidentally destroyed the whole playground that the others had worked so hard on. Oh, and apparently, she also knocked everyone out cold. Nana, feeling guilty, ran away. And so that's what happened. Nana left the moonlit forest feeling guilty and depressed. She wanted to search for a way to control her wild, playground-destroying, pie-burning power. And that's when she found out that Molina was actually following her. Yay, right? Someone to keep Nana company. 
Molina knew what happened and she also understood Nana's guilt as well as Nana's desire to control her power. Now, Molina, who had been living on the outskirts of the moonlit forest before she met Nana, told Nana that she knew of a place, a dangerous place where a magic fruit grows, a magic fruit that can help her control her wild spiritual energy. Hmm, convenient ain't it? Magic fruit that can help solve your problems found in a white va- I mean, in a dangerous place. That dangerous place was actually the Shadow Swamp, found near the Land of Despair. Now, you'd think the words Shadow Swamp and Land of Despair would be enough to make your common sense kick in, right? Well, not for our little nana. She decided that she would go there and eat this magic fruit that can make all her problems go away. Long story short, after some obstacles, they finally got there. The Shadow Swamp. And it really was there, the magic fruit. It was inside the depths of a dangerous cave. Sounds familiar, right? Remember Molina getting trapped before inside one? Anyway, Nana strode and skipped happily through the ominous looking place to take the fruit. And guess what? Monsters! Hungry, abyss corroded, pitch black, ugly monsters. Who would have guessed, right? Who would have guessed that there were monsters in the shadow swamp near the land of despair? That Nana though, that's for sure. The monsters, sensing the pure nature of Nana, hungered for her meat even more. Now, here's what happens next. Molina saw the monsters lunging for Nana, so she then used her powers of transformation and transformed herself into Nana. She stood between the defenseless Nana and the hungry vicious monsters. The monsters, thinking Molina to be their pure-natured prey, sank their teeth into her flesh and just went cray-cray over her meat. Nana, seeing all this, hurriedly ate the fruit. If what Molina had said was true, then she would be able to control her powers and thus help her friend. Nana then raised her hand and sent out a powerful force that knocked back to all the creatures away from Molina. The monsters scattered away, terrified of the fearsome force that came from the small Nana. Nana stared at her hand. It worked. The fruit did enable her to control and channel her wild powers. She now had what she had always wished for. However though, she forgot all that as she turned to look at Molina. Her friend was dying. Nana knelt down beside Molina and tried to use her spiritual powers to heal her friend. But it was too late. Molina then, who by the way from the looks of it was still in Nana's form, held Nana's hand and shared her transformation powers. Molina hoped that in this small way, she could still be beside Nana forever. Stay happy. Stay happy forever, Molina said, and then died. And there we go guys, so I guess when Nana uses her skill, it's not actually Molina that comes out, but just some spiritual power created by Nana inspired from her dead friend. And that is Nana's story. However, that's just what the Illuminati wants you to believe. What if it was actually Nana that died back there? And then Molina captured Nana and started living off her life. I mean, Molina did like Nana so much and her origins are really weird. And in the first place, since Molina can morph, is her real appearance even that of a leopard cat? What if she lured Nana into that place, thinking to kill her off using those deadly monsters? Maybe that's her thing? finding a person that she likes and then she caps them and leaves their life. Conspiracy! Well, anyways, that's all for this video guys. Comment below which hero you'd like to see next. Stay safe and thank you for watching.